greetings from the Tech Cave. Fenris here, and today I have here a rather large box. Now, this was sent in to me by another YouTuber who goes by the name Scruffy Looking RGB. And I had reached out to Scruffy because he does like a lot of pickup videos within Japan. And I was like, hey, would there be any way I could like send you some money and you do some shopping for junk consoles for me and just ship it my way? And he was like, sure. So that's what we got here today. Now, this isn't everything that was found, but this is a good chunk of it. And I do hope to do another video in the future where I unbox the rest of it. But for now, let's see what we got sent our way. Alright, so as you can see right in front of us, we have here a stack of Super Famicoms. But, not just any Super Famicoms. These are all 400 yen, scruffy looking Super Famicoms. Now, the story behind these is that I had reached out to Scruffy some time ago, and I asked him, like, Hey, if I was to give you 100 USD, could you see how many junk consoles we can get our hands on with just that? So he agreed and we set the ball in motion. Now, originally I was gonna do only Super Famicoms, but I would later on change my mind and be like, hey, how about we also throw in some other systems too? And he was willing to pivot. And I do appreciate him doing that. Now, this isn't all of it. This is just some of what he was able to pick up. Um, but unfortunately, due to the fact that he couldn't source a bigger box for all of it, he can only send what he was able to send. I will be getting some more systems in soon, so I will do another video when they come in. But for now, let's work on these. All right, so I have my RetroTank 5X set up over here, and we're gonna be testing all four of these Super Famicoms one by one. Now, the reason why I'm doing this is because even though Scruffy did test these systems, in fact, he did leave me some notes, like, what it says right here rgb okay sound uh composite okay sound okay so he did already test these systems i just want to test them again just to make sure that nothing happened during shipping and whatnot and the way i usually test super famicoms is first of all i test all video formats that it supports with the exception of rf and that's mainly because i'm not going to be using rf anytime soon and most people who buy like old retro systems are most likely not going to be using RF anyways. So what I usually test is composite. This is my custom made composite cable. S video, which the audio is not hooked up for S video because well, that's taken over by the composite lead. And as well, I already have this hooked up, but I also test with RGB SCART. And I also have power hooked up too. So first order of business is testing this <laughs> rather warped Super Famicom. You can see that there's some serious warpage around the power supply area, or power switch area, sorry. And as much as that sucks, hopefully it does still work anyways. So first order of business, if you're going to be getting into Super Famicom or Super Nintendo Repair, you need to get your hands on a burn-in test cart repro or an authentic burn-in test cart if you can afford it. These will, for the most part, diagnose most of the issues that you will find with Super Nintendos and Super Famicoms. Way better than most random game that you can pull off the shelf. So, I'm just gonna pop this in. And I'm gonna hit the... Hit the... Ah! Oh yeah, that warped plastic is making it to where it's hard to budge the switch. But, as we can see here... The timer is going, so we do have some CPU activity going on, so that's good. But let's make sure that we can even navigate the menu. So just hit select, and we can. 
So let's go over to the burn-in test. Make sure everything passes. Work ram pass and we're getting pass, pass, pass. And APU passed. And just from here, I'm just gonna be watching the burn-in test just to see if any sort of visual anomalies come up. Ooh, we got our first anomaly. And actually, let me see if I can get the menu out of the way. Yep, we got some graphical glitching going on within the I think this is the foreground image. But everything else seems fine so far. Nope. We got a lot of graphical errors going on here. Not like super severe, but enough to be noticeable. Like that's not supposed to be happening. And the graphical glitches I was mainly talking about, right now it's like testing the uh, Mode 7 stuff. And mode 7 passes. So I'm just going to hit reset. Actually, let me uh, power it down first. And let's test all the other cables. And we'll go over exactly what I was talking about earlier. So switching over to composite. Come on. Uh, there we go. It's a little difficult to plug in when you can't necessarily see the port. Uh, composite looks fine. It doesn't look too dark. Next, S video. Just gonna switch over to S video. There we go. And S video works. Okay, so I'm gonna switch over to RGB really quick. Now, I'm not sure if you caught it, but the graphical anomalies I was talking about were like the vertical lines that were appearing on some of the foreground images, although I think they might be background. Um, I can't remember out of the top of my head what those images were, but basically that's not supposed to happen. So to see if this actually affects gameplay, we're going to be testing with some games. And if I notice them immediately, I'm going to make note of it and then we'll move on to the next system. So what I like to test for system functionality in terms of games, I like to test with Super Mario Kart because if there's anything wrong with the CPU, this will generally catch it in the form of like corrupted foreground or background images, although that can also be PPU as well. Um, but most notably, if your CPU passes all the checks, but isn't necessarily working correctly, you might notice the controllers acting on their own when running Super Mario Kart. Mainly in like the menus, it'll just start hitting start out of nowhere. Next, I have Super Donkey Kong or Donkey Kong Country. I mainly use this to test the CIC functionality to make sure that it's actually working as intended. If the CIC is not working correctly, this will trigger the anti-piracy screen. And then of course I test with an expansion pin game. In this case, I choose my reproduction copy of Star Fox 2 because you can use regular Star Fox, you can use Yoshi's Island. I just prefer to use Star Fox 2. And just for fun, I like to test with my own handmade reproduction copy of Kamen Rider. So, Let's first pop in Super Mario Kart. Oops. And right off the bat, it does affect the gameplay. So we're going to make note of that. Let me get a pen. All right. So. Passes, tests, 
vertical lines in foreground. So in terms of what that could possibly be, I'm not 100% certain. It could be like a bad contact from the cartridge slot. It could also just be like a broken trace somewhere. Prob I'm most likely guessing around the RAM area. Um, it could also just be faulty RAM. Uh, more specifically, it would, since it's not affecting any of the uh, CPU functions, I'm going to guess it's most likely video RAM might be uh, having issues. But I might investigate, sorry, investigate this on a later date. So I'm just going to place that sticky note on it. You can see right there. And I'm just going to go through really quick just to make sure there aren't anything else that I need to know. Yep. You can see more of the vertical lines. So it does seem to pass the CIC check. play expansion pin games though. Ugh. It will. Okay, so unfortunately the first Super Famicom that we are we have tested it works kind of, but it definitely has some graphical issues. So that's the first one out of the way. Let's get the second one up. Okay, so I have the second Super Famicom all hooked up already. And according to these notes here, it says RGB is okay, but I I think it says composite and sound is okay. I'm not entirely sure, but let's give it a test anyways. So first up, burn in test cart, power it on. So we got the screen, the timer is ticking. Let's move on to the burn in test. Make sure that it passes everything. It does. Now we're going to go through all the uh, foreground and background tests. Also, as you can see, we're not getting any of the vertical lines like what we saw with the last Super Famicom, or rather the first Super Famicom we tested with. And, you know, that just kind of shows that it's not my burn-in test cart, it's just something wrong with that particular unit. passed all the tests. So now we're gonna start testing cables. So let's switch over to composite, plug, plug that in. Uh, oh, we're getting power, but it doesn't look like we're getting composite. Hmm, okay. Well, let's switch over to S-Video. I have an idea of what that could be, but just to be sure, let's also test S video real quick just to see what's going up. Ooh. Yeah, we're getting some serious distortion on S video. Like you can see some of the text is very unstable. It's kind of wobbly. Yeah, um, I think we got some leaky capacitors going on here. So, actually, I wonder if we can get an Im a composite image if we were to test with a game. So, let's test with Super Mario Kart. No, we get audio, though. What about... Actually, what does it look like for S-Video? <laughs> it's super dark. Oh my god. <laughs> 
Oh yeah, those capacitors are spent. <laughs> you can see like, it's very unstable. There's a lot of ghosting going on. Oh yeah, those, those caps are done. So let's switch over to SCART RGB just so we have a stable image and audio. And I'm gonna make note of that real quick. Composite and S video bad needs recap. Oh, actually, now that I'm looking at Super Mario Kart, there is one other thing I forgot to test with the last Super Famicom, but since I gotta look at that anyways, I'll probably do it again uh, on my own time. But once you let the title screen kind of do its thing, pay attention to this demo mode here. The reason why is because if you are having some PPU issues, you will notice that the scaling and mode seven effect would just not work. Even if it passed the check, this is the definitive way of testing to make sure that mode seven works. So moving on, let's test Super Donkey Kong. Ah. Make sure that the CIC works correctly. And it does. Okay. Expansion pin game with Star Fox 2. Works. And just because we didn't do it last time, let's pop in some Common Rider. Bandai Presents. Common Rider works. This part isn't necessary. I just really like playing this game. Okay, so now I got the problems noted down. Just gonna stick that on. Plug it. Got our note on, so let's move on to the next one. Okay, got the third unit here. This one's got a bit of a rattle in it, and uh, it's clear as to why that is. So this one's definitely gonna need a reshell. Um, according to the notes here, it says RGB okay sound? Uh, composite okay, sound okay. So I don't know why there's a question mark for sound for RGB, because technically there's only two outputs for sound, then that's the left and right channel. So I don't know why there would be a question for RGB mode, but whatever. So let's get this all hooked up. So RGB SCART, power input. Controller, turn in test cart. Okay, so timer is ticking. We're able to navigate the menu. Passes on the initial test. What in the world? I'm not sure if my camera caught that, but the audio started getting scratchy out of nowhere. Oh, I'm hearing it. Hmm, that's 
That's kind of weird. Not sure why the audio is all crackly. Let's switch to composite. Make sure that we get composite video instead of a dancing mess. We get composite. Switch over to S video. There we go. So we got S video. Hmm. Let me try running a game on S video. So let's pop in Super Mario Kart. And remember, we don't have sound because it sounds not hooked up for S video. Um, yeah, uh, it looks like S video is fine, so. I don't know, maybe it kind of broke connection for a little bit. Although now I wonder if that's why we were getting crackly audio. Actually, you know what? Let me just make sure that... Yeah, mode 7's good. So, let me switch over to composite real quick. And let, uh, I don't know why it just took out Super Mario Kart. Pop Super Mario Kart back on. Oh, yeah. Eey. We're getting audio distortions even on composite. Eey. So I'm going to make a note of that. Audio distortions I wonder if that's a possible cap issue yeah all right so next super donkey kong Ugh. that is crunchy Make sure we actually get into the menu. We do. Star Fox 2 for expansion audio. Or sorry, expansion pins. Expansion pin game works. And this time I won't bother testing with Common Rider because, uh, yeah, that, uh, that audio is crunchy. So, audio distortions. So, moving on to the final unit. Okay, now we're on to the final unit. And according to this note here, it says AV and RGB is okay. But I'll be the judge of that. So, let's start with SCART RGB. Plug that in. Power. Come on. I know I can find the barrel jack. There it is. Controller. Burning test cart. Whoa, what the? <laughs> oh, that is not normal at all. Let me make sure that's a. Nope, that is not a connection issue. Ooh, something is wrong. Let's run the burn-in test. Ooh, that is not good. Work RAM. Pass. Pass, 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 pass. Pass, pass, pass. <laughs> oh, so everything's passing, but that don't look right. Let me see if the rest of the menu looks like that. Oh my god. Yeah, we got some serious graphical corruption going on. Oh. 
Oh, Mario. Wait, let's back out. Oh, no. <laughs> Oh, that is crunchy. Oh my god! Oh, there is something seriously wrong. This looks like something straight out of hell. Uh, at least the rotation works. So does zoom and scaling. Oh, that is funny. Let me see if it uh, it's like that on other signals. So composite. Come on. It's like that on composite. Is it like that on this video? It's like that on this video. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Actually, let's switch over to SCART RGB. But, oh my, I just noticed something. There's a big dust bunny right here. Uh, the cartridge slot's not particularly dusty. Let me see what happens when we play a game. Oh my god. There is some graphical corruption on Mario and Luigi on the top. Something is seriously bugged in the foreground. The game itself seems to be fine for the most part. I mean, we got mode 7. I'm not noticing any egregious graphics. Okay. Let's let's switch over to Super Donkey Kong. If it's foreground issues, this game has been a bug like hell. Oh, there we go. <laughs> I'm just gonna let it run to the title uh, to the, the whole title sequence this time. Oh, it's not as funny. Although I am, actually now I'm starting to see the uh, graphical corruption around the corners there. Oh my god! <laughs> oh yeah, something is like super bugged. Oh my god, look at all that! So it's not a foreground layer, it's a background layer. looks so messed up. I don't know if that's a RAM related issue or it might be a PPU related issue. But the thing is though, it passed the checks. I'll have to investigate that further. I'm just letting this run because now I'm curious. Doesn't seem to affect Super FX games. Or maybe it is and I'm not... Oh wait, I'm not paying attention. No, the background is screwed up. Oh, 
Oh my god. Oh yeah, this thing is seriously messed up. Common Rider? Oh, it just won't even boot. Let me try reseeding it. Oh, there we go. <laughs> oh my god. What does the tile screen look like? Oh, it's actually not that bad, but yeah, that's uh, that ain't right. <laughs> So, I'm gonna put, uh, where did I put my pen? Oh, there it is. Background layer corrupted. Okay enough of that so yeah uh background layer corrupted so yeah that's really it in terms of testing the systems and uh yeah that was a pleasant little surprise at the end but sure enough scruffy if you're watching this you definitely sent me some scruffy looking super famicoms and they are extra scruffy. Oops. Um, so three of these are going to need a bit more investigation. I, I, I want to say the audio distortion ones and the, oops, the composite and S video bat, uh, bad one. These two, I feel like is just bad capacitors. At worst, there might be some rotted traces, but who knows? These two, on the other hand, these two are going to need some serious work. Sorry about that. The Super Famicom here on the right decided to go flying off my desk. And, uh, yeah. But fortunately, this is the Super Famicom that I plan on replacing the shell on. So not that big of a deal. But, uh, yeah. That's my methodology in terms of, like, testing these Super Famicoms. And... Again, I really cannot stress this enough. You really need to get a burn-in test cart reproduction or authentic cart, doesn't matter. You need to get yourself a burn-in test cart because these will spot more errors with systems than just any other game would. So however you go about it, whether it's eBay, AliExpress, get your hands on one of these. These will be a huge lifesaver in terms of testing these systems out but yeah that's uh that's really it sorry it took me a while to do a new video i've just been really busy with work and holiday season and whatnot but rest assured i do have more videos coming up soon i just need to have some time to sit down film and edit but with that being said guys oh and also check out scruffy looking rgb's channel i will have that linked in the description below he does a lot of really cool pickup videos he does some mod videos here and there and some refurbished videos but what really caught my attention the most with his channel was his pickups videos where i got to see just how much a lot of this stuff over at japan costs compared to how much it would cost for me to get these straight off like eBay or whatnot. But anyways, yeah, thank you all for watching. And once again, until the blue moon rises, I'll see you next time.